Hello, my name is Lauren and welcome to the Theoretical YouTube channel where I haven't taken a real math class in over a year, so this video took way too long to write. But we'll get to the swarm of numbers in a second. First, let's talk about Up. I mean, it's been almost 10 years since this movie came out and yet it's still some of Pixar's finest work. Is there anybody who doesn't cry after the first eight minutes of this film? If you said yes, you're either lying or you have no soul. Anyway, if you've been a kid since like, well, ever, you've probably tried to fly away with a balloon. And if you're me, that happened every time you went to Red Robin, which was honestly way too much. And if you've seen Up, the chances that you dreamt of floating away are even higher, because at this point, the balloons are almost as iconic of Pixar as Woody's hat or the Luxo Ball. Now, obviously this movie isn't a great depiction of real world physics, but exactly how many balloons would it realistically take to lift the Fredrickson house? Now, I haven't actually seen this film in a very long time, not since my sister ruined it for me by watching it every day, three times a day, for an entire year. I mean, she was a four-year-old with good taste, just no social life. Anyway, if anyone needs a quick refresher on the film, it goes like this. Carl Fredrickson meets the love of his life, Ellie, and they grow old together. They both dream of adventure and moving to South America one day. It's like America? but it never happens. Ellie passes away, leaving Carl lonely, and an evil corporation attempts to steal his house, which he built with his wife. Tell your boss he can have our house. Really? When I'm dead. Carl hatches a plan to take his house to South America and bring the memory of Ellie with him. A young wilderness explorer scout accidentally joins him, and they spend the rest of the movie doing a ton of random things, like meeting a giant bird named Kevin, getting into dog fights with literal talking dogs, and oh yeah, lifting a house with balloons. According to our all-knowing lord and savior Disney Wiki, the animators created 20,622 balloons for the liftoff scene, and about half that many for the rest of the film. And we know that the movie follows some real-world physics, because the lighter the house becomes, the less balloons it takes to lift it. When Carl throws everything out of his home to lighten the load, he basically creates the ideal starting point for this theory. He has prepared a situation where the only thing that gravity is affecting is the house itself. All we need to do is figure out how much Carl's house weighs and how much a balloon can lift. Let's start with the balloon, because really it's not the balloon doing the work, but the helium inside it. Helium generates lift because compared to the atmospheric pressure of Earth, it's less dense than the air around it, and lighter things will float to the top. It's the same concept as why oil and water can make a lava lamp. Oil is less dense than water and therefore can rest on top of it. At normal atmospheric pressure, one liter of helium will lift one gram of weight. But how much helium is in a balloon? Well, it obviously depends on the size of the balloon, but how big are the balloons and up? Well, here's where we're gonna have to take a leap of faith and assume that common objects in the movie are about the same size as they are in real life. And then we have to select an object with a standardized size in the real world. We can't use the fence posts or Carl himself because fences and people don't have specific heights but sports equipment is often heavily regulated. And look what Carl has on the end of his walker. Assuming that these tennis balls are regulation size, according to the International Tennis Federation, balls can be between 6.54 and 6.86 centimeters in diameter. About this big. Carl's balls are probably a little bit squashed, so let's err on the side of caution and stick to the lower end of that measurement. If the tennis balls are about 6.5 centimeters, then we can use pixel measurements to determine the size of everything else in the movie. With this method, we have determined that the balloons in Up are approximately 19.43 centimeters in diameter, or a radius of 9.715, which is great because that's about the average size of a real-world helium party balloon. 
Now, balloons aren't perfect spheres, but they're pretty close, and we're not being picky, so we can find the volume of a balloon with the equation v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Plugging in all our numbers, we learn that a balloon will hold 3.840.75 centimeters cubed, or about 3.84 liters of helium. If one liter of helium can lift one gram of weight, then a balloon from up can lift 3.84 grams. So now we tackle the house. Luckily for us, Carl's house is ridiculously small. Like, you know the tiny house movement? That's pretty much what we're dealing with here. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that according to the pixel measurements that we got from the tennis balls, Carl's only about three feet tall. I guess he just doesn't need that much space. Nevertheless, using these same ball measurements, we figure out that Carl's front porch is 278.8 centimeters wide, and the front of his house is 559.8 centimeters. The size of this rolled up hose is about 50 centimeters, which we can use to find the side of his house at a length of 575.7 centimeters. So the Fredrickson house is a roughly square two-story home that's about 5.6 by 5.7 meters. So how much does a house weigh? Well, I have to admit that my research probably isn't super sound here, but a house mover is a real profession. And according to several online discussions about hardwood floors and moving homes, the internet tends to agree that a house weighs roughly 60 pounds per square foot. The footprint of Carl's home has an area of 32.23 meters squared, which we can double because of the second story. That times 60 pounds per square foot equals a weight of 41,642 pounds or 18,888,664 ,88 grams. So now all we need to do is make the amount of lift that the balloons can generate equal to the amount of weight being pulled down by the house. Of course, this won't really make the house fly. Instead, it'll make the net or combined forces on the house equal to zero. According to Newton's first law of motion, because there are no dominant forces acting on the house, it will not accelerate. An object at rest will tend to stay at rest. So while the Fredrickson home won't exactly lift off the ground like we see in the movie, it will float in the air. And because it'll be so exactly balanced, even Carl's weak muscles would be able to send his house upward with a gentle push. And because it's not moving, I won't have to deal with air resistance. And nobody likes air resistance. So that's a plus. Anyway, I kind of lied when I said earlier that each balloon could lift 3.84 grams, because really, that's how much the helium inside a balloon can lift. The balloons themselves weigh probably around 2 grams, which means that every balloon we add increases the weight of the house. But if we remember to accommodate that in our final equation, it's not a big deal. Okay, given all that we've covered at this point, here we go. The weight of the system has to equal the lift of the balloons. So house weight plus balloon weight equals balloon lift. We can plug in all the numbers we know, where n is the variable that means the unknown amount of balloons required to lift the house. We use our fancy seventh grade algebra skills to combine like terms and solve the equation. Therefore, we discover that we need a grand total of 10,321,674.23, which will round to five, balloons to lift the Fredrickson home. And remember, that is the minimum amount to float a tiny house if there is literally nothing else in there. No furniture or pictures or books or kitchen appliances. Man, we really lucked out that Carl decided to throw all of that out so that we could do this analysis with some real reason to ignore that stuff. That would have been really complicated. Hey there, I hope you liked today's video and if you did, why don't you subscribe to our channel and follow us on Twitter at theory underscore central. Guess what? You may not have been our eighth subscriber, but you could be our eighth Twitter follower. And if you want to engage with us in the comment section of this video, I'd like to ask what other movies has someone ruined for you by watching too often? I mean, seriously, Up is one of the greatest animated features of all time, and my sister just had to go and wreck it for me. But she also went as Mr. Fredrickson for Halloween that year, and even I have to admit, that was pretty adorable. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. I was hiding under your porch because I love you.